Hi everyone and welcome to New Tech. My name's Miles and it's wonderful to have you here. Uh, today we're going to be looking at the MPCNC and the much needed upgrades that I have created. So let's get started. <laughs> As I was building my MPCNC, I had in mind there was three things that I wanted to improve on it. The first thing was rigidity, the second thing was the safety features, and then the third thing was maximizing the space that I could use. So the very first thing that I had in mind was that I was going to use a 1.5 kilowatt spindle in the center of my MPCNC. Now, that is much heavier than the palm router that is typically used. So the very first thing that I did was that I increased the um, the strength of the outer rim using solid 25 mil bar now this does not flex at all so it really stopped the issues with the flex of the z-axis as it moved along to the center of the mpcnc however i've still got the hollow bars in the middle so i can pass the wires through there is a slight flex there but nothing that i'm too worried about now the second thing that I want to improve is the general stability overall in the machine. After some use, I found that the machine started to get a little bit wobbly um, just because the parts started to loosen up and settle in. And so what I did was I went aside and created a 45 degree angle bracket that can be installed directly onto the legs of the machine. In this design, I wanted to focus on something that could easily slip on and not having to pull the machine apart to put it back on. So I designed like a C-clamp design that could be easily slipped on using one single bolt to uh, fix it to the leg and then um, screw it to the table. And you wouldn't believe the difference that that has made. I've gone from about a 0.2 or 3 mil of a shake down to pretty much nothing. So it's actually made quite an incredible difference with that 45 degree angle bracket. And with all my 3D prints that I have created, there is absolutely no supports needed. So this printed really well without any supports. So the next part that I wanted to improve was the safety of my machine. So besides using an e-stop, I've got one of those installed. That should be on every machine. And that's just there as an emergency. You can hit it and it will cut everything off. But what I also did was that I realized that on my garble settings for my Arduino, I had three outputs and those allowed me to stop the machine. It allowed me to pause the machine. So at any time I was running anything, I was able to pause it in case I needed to fix something slightly. And then the last button was a start button or a continue. So those were really simple. I think I used the, the RST, the feed, and this cycle outputs on the uh, Arduino. But I also used the five volt output to light up those LEDs on the, the buttons. Another thing that I've also improved for safety is this keypad. And so what I've been able to do is I bought just a really cheap uh, Bluetooth keypad off eBay. And with this keypad, I could go into the universal G-code sender settings and I was able to give each one of these keys a function which allowed me to step away from the machine and actually go up close to what I was doing. And then I had very simple uh, functions that I could easily click and move the machine around. So I just did the basic um, X and Y axis using the keypad then the plus and minus I've used for my spindle uh, Z axis up and down. I've also done a, a reset zero and return to zero function on the keypad. So this was an absolute time saver and a safety must to have on your machine so you can move around and do what you need to do without being tethered to one spot and see exactly what you're doing up close. And the third thing in the safety that I want to look at is my upgrades to the motors on my machine. So I had some issues with my motors getting quite hot and so I was really concerned about the long-term use of my motors that I've installed. Now I have been pushing these at almost maximum amperage. So I've put these on two amps and they've been absolutely fantastic. They just chew through any movement at all and they never skip a beat. But the consequence with that was that I was overheating these slightly and I was really concerned. So what I did was I went aside and redesigned the um, brackets for the, the motors and added on a fan to the top of the motors, allowing that air to pass 
the motor and out the bottom. Now, this has been an absolute champ when it comes to keeping those um, motors nice and cool because I could run it for hours on end and still only be just above room temperature. So absolute must. I've also done the center motor too on the Z axis. I've created a little bracket around there that can slip over the top and one and one simple zip tie that will hold that together on top of the motor just to stop it falling off. But that also has done a fantastic job at keeping that Z motor uh, nice and cool and no skips at all within the Z movement. The very last thing that I'm going to be looking at today is one of my favorite things is maximizing the space on my MPCNC. So one of the things that I was looking at is that a lot of the uh, CNC machines that I have seen were kind of constricted to one way or another because you had kind of walls going one way and you're kind of restricted about where if you want to put a long piece of material down and slide it into the machine that you could only do it from one direction. Now I was really interested in keeping as you can see here my um, my cords and my my cable chains well off the table so I'm able to slip in um, any material underneath especially if I'm doing something quite large and there's a certain way that I need to put into the machine so these have been a fantastic space saver for me and able to do some really cool stuff when I'm putting in that long pieces of material and just cutting into the part that I need to then removing it with ease and not getting caught in the cable chain so you can imagine when this comes across that the cable will pull across and anything that's on top of it would have been um, in the way but now I can just slide everything underneath and this is kind of held up by these um, neat little brackets that I've created on each side. So to my very last thing and one of the biggest design challenges for me was actually creating the Koala Vac. Now this is a really cool attachment and I created this for a really specific reason. So to save space on my machine, what I realized was the traditional vac entry to the spindle was usually placed in front of the spindle. And what happened was that actually got caught when it went to the home position down the far corner. And so I was kind of losing some space when that was moving around and I wasn't able to push that as far as I could into the corner. So what I did was that I pushed around my center gantry, but when I created the machine, I pushed it to the far corners and kind of had a look. And so I pushed it the first corner and found that there was a little bit of space in the corner, but certainly not enough. But the far left corner, I actually found that there was just enough space that would take the same volume as my hose, my 35 mil hose from the, the vacuum that I could convert that into like a rectangle shape and then back down into the vac head. So I really love this design and it's a really simple design to install. So it only needs, well, I've only needed one uh, zip tie to attach it to and it just goes into the two screw holes that are already on the machine. And this has been fantastic. I haven't had any clogs with this design. It allows you to kind of design the vac head on however your machine is set up. So you could easily put in some type of tube that keeps the air in, or you could just leave it as a blank halo just to pull in the dust that is pulled off the top of the cut. So guys, I hope you've really enjoyed what I have shown you today. I have actually included these 3D files for all my parts today down below on my Thingiverse page. I hope you've really enjoyed it. Please make sure you give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you next time. Thanks guys.